Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my official college football upset picks here for week number 10, first week end of November. I also do have my parlays coming up later in this video, but we do begin. This is an 11 a.m. Central start time, 12 o'clock noon for the East Coast people. You do have Texas sitting minus five against Kansas State. This is a very tough one, very tough one. I do have Texas winning but not covering. I will also note the line on this game has gone down to four. Quinn Ewers, you know how these college teams are. There's really no update on him. I'm guessing he's not going to be playing. But either way, this is a Kansas State team. They are very good. You would expect Texas. They're, they're more talented. But Kansas State, in terms of analytics, has been amazing. This is possibly their best team, even better than last year's team. And they won the conference. So it'll be a very interesting game. It's a huge opportunity for Kansas State. And you really have to love how this is setting up if you are K-State. K -State, excuse me. An 11 a.m. game, limited atmosphere because of the start time, and possibly Texas dealing with a massive question mark surrounding their quarterback. They have a great opportunity in that one. 3.30 game, and this is an SEC game. It is Missouri traveling to Georgia. This is the game of the season for Missouri. This is this would be program changing if they win it. And I will say the line on this game has gone down to 14. It was aggressively at Georgia minus the 16, but I still have to take Georgia here. I understand this does feel like kind of an NPC pick for me, and it is. It's like I'm taking Georgia, of course. You know, they're big favorites. They're the two-time defending national champion. They just looked really good against Florida. I did have them covering against Florida, and they rewarded me mainly based on the fact that I thought Florida was really overrated. And in a game like this, listen, it's just hard for Missouri going on the road. Georgia is clearly more talented. You could say this is an opportunity for Missouri with Brock Bowers being out. We saw five straight weeks of Georgia really struggling, but it's very obvious the narrative surrounding Georgia. And when you look at the rankings, by the way, guys, obviously Georgia not ranked number one in terms of the playoff committee. These were based off of the AP poll. Um, but just in my opinion, I think Georgia just way more talented. They're at home. I like them pretty big over Missouri. Uh, moving on to the rivalry game, it is Oklahoma traveling to Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's been amazing. Oklahoma, I've had question marks about their offense, their rushing game for weeks. And I am taking Oklahoma State to win. Kind of a minor upset here. Certainly, according to ESPN FPI, giving Oklahoma an 81% chance, this would be a major upset. But it is a rivalry. Oklahoma State's playing really well. Oklahoma, the narratives surrounding it are saying to uh, go ahead and take Oklahoma State. They've been on a roll. They're at home. Oklahoma, they're not world beaters. I know they've been solid. They had a really nice start to the year. The game against Kansas was a really big red flag. The game against Central Florida or UCF, I know they don't like being called Central Florida. That was another huge red flag. Next, we've got Virginia Tech traveling to Louisville, and this is your common surprising upset right now. Everyone kind of considering Louisville. They've only got one loss. Maybe they're a sneaky dark horse. I think Virginia Tech, with the offensive upside, sneaks up on a Louisville team coming off a big win last week. They're having a breakout season. I get it. But Virginia Tech, the 30 points in the first half last week at home. The long break they had. That was a weeknight game, so they get extra rest. People are really overlooking this game. And it has all the components for a potential upset for Virginia Tech. This is how college football works, especially with a team like Louisville, who really doesn't have all that crazy talent. I mean, I understand they're certainly more talented than Virginia Tech, but it's it, it's negligible. And I will take Virginia Tech to win that game in a surprising upset. 7 o'clock game, it is Kansas traveling to Iowa State. Iowa State sitting minus 1, maybe minus 2, depending on where you look. And I do like Iowa State in this game. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Iowa State won this by game by about 7 points, just based on the fact that they're at home. They've got a solid offense emerging all of a sudden. They can throw the football. And Kansas with, you know, their backup quarterback, not nearly as good. I know they won against... Oklahoma, but this is college football. It really is a week-to-week -week thing. They've been very inconsistent. I will take Iowa State at home in that matchup. Next, we've got Washington traveling to USC. This is the 7.30 game, so 4.30 Pacific at the Coliseum. 
Uh, Washington right now sitting minus four, possibly minus three and a half. I do like USC, surprisingly enough, to win this game outright. It would certainly not be good for the Pac-12 if USC ended up winning it, but it's just based off the fact we know this is going to be a ridiculously high-scoring shootout. Washington at this point, really limited in terms of defense, surprisingly bad. This is probably a situation where one turnover will win you or lose you the game. Two really elite quarterbacks, two bad defenses, two mediocre at best run games. It's just going to be a shootout, and I'll take the value in the home team there when it comes to that one. Uh, next, we're going to be taking a look at my parlay. So I've got three different parlays here. The first one, you can see Arizona State at Utah. So a lot of these parlays have actually been bet in the favorable direction. Now that I see the lines are updating, like from my top 10 best bets, because I had the under 43 in the Arizona State Utah, or maybe it was 42 and a half. I don't know. But the, it's been bet down to 41 and a half. It's not surprising. This, this really should be a lower number. Or maybe it hasn't even been bet down. I don't know. Maybe I'm just misremembering it. But it's just a situation where later in the season, it's going to be 40 degrees. Arizona State has a terrible offense. Utah can't score. They're like Iowa 2.0. They've got a great defense, especially at home, but a horrible offense. Give me the value in the under 41 and a half. And I just remembered I didn't include the... Iowa game in here, but I would certainly still take the under in the Iowa game. I think it's under 30 and a half in the Wrigley Field game against Northwestern, the 330 game. I wish that game had snow so bad, man. Oh my God. It's this week with the weather, guys. It is really nice out. We're kind of getting a weird situation where a lot of us are actually getting nailed right now with about 30 degree weather. That's why you saw those Mac games you know, with snow, but we're going to get a nice warm up here. And these games are going to be in the fifties and sixties, a lot of sun outside of the Oregon game, which is going to be heavy rain, heavy rain all day in the Oregon game. They're probably still going to win, but possibly take the under. And then also you do have rain in the Washington state game and the Fresno state game, possibly in California. Interesting there. Uh, Ohio state minus the 19 should be about 55, 60 degrees in New Jersey for that one at Rutgers. I like the Buckeyes to cover. They didn't cover last week. Rutgers is really not nearly as good as their record at 6-2. and two. I mean, give me a break. You take a look at one of their wins a few weeks ago against a horrible Michigan State team at home. They were down by about 20 points. I think Ohio State crushes Rutgers. I know the Kyle McCord injury. We'll have to see. Oklahoma State, I like them plus the six. Even if they lose, you do get some value possibly if, you know, Oklahoma wins by like four or five. There's some wiggle room. And then how about Notre Dame? Right on the money line at Clemson. Clemson, they're talented. We get it. They've lost some close games, but at this point, they're four and four. Notre Dame, they want to finish their season strong. Uh, moving on to the next one, I love the over in the SMU Rice game. So this this was originally 58. It's been bet up a point and a half to 59 and a half. Just two really elite offenses, especially SMU. And SMU is so good. They're probably going to get up by 20 points early. Rice has the ability to score a lot of garbage time points with their quarterback situation. So I like the over 59 and a half. That, that over under should be like 64 or 65. I took Vanderbilt, you know, plus the 13 against Auburn at home. I just think it's a, it's a miserable situation for Auburn. This is Vanderbilt dealing with all that construction around their stadium. They're going to want to play hard. Auburn's not that good. They're going on the road. They're, again, they're just not motivated. No one's going to be focusing on this game. I will take the value in Vandy at home. Iowa State on the money line against Kansas. I already talked about that one. And then the under in the California-Oregon game. You're playing the weather. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. You've got an over-under of 59. Probably not great value because we know how good Oregon's offense is in California. They have a really good running back, but they're probably going to have to abandon the run. You would expect Oregon to be up big in that game. And then moving on to my third one, I do like Georgia State to win this game outright against James Madison. You know, it's funny, James Madison is ranked 10th overall in strength of record. Kind of funny there. They're definitely due to come back down to earth, and I think they lose outright to uh, Georgia State on the road. Georgia State's a very formidable bull opponent for a team like James Madison. The under in the Illinois at Minnesota game, I just think that's good value. Big 10 West, you know, bad offenses. I'll take the under there. And then the over 51, UCLA at Arizona, absolutely. Give me a, you know... 27 to 24 type game is that I yeah I think that's 52 total points so you would is that 52 total points I think it is it, it would be over so e either way 
you know, that, that just seems like a, that number should be 54 or 55. Arizona does have a pretty explosive offense. UCLA can score with Chip Kelly. And then Georgia just on the money line. And I can't see uh, Penn State throwing away their season, losing on the road to a Maryland team who really has not been good. I think Penn State will probably actually cover the 10.5 or the 11-point spread just because that's typically what Penn State does. They beat everyone outside of Ohio State and Michigan. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that is always in the description.